Bro, they just don't stop complaining, bro. All of these Nintendo detractors, all of these haters, there's been so much hate and cap for this game that's not even released. You know what we're gonna do? In this video, we're gonna discuss all that cap and all that hate and all those unwarranted complaints over The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Now, I might not cover all the BS in this video, and if I do miss anything, let me know down in the comments below and we can continue the discussion there. But before we jump full in, go ahead and give this video a like and subscribe. I am at 170 subscribers and I would love to hit 200 sometime soon. Without further ado, let's hop right in this. So the first thing your boy wants to talk about is that people are complaining that this game looks bad. Bro, We've seen like 40 seconds of the game. How do you know it looks bad? It looked fine when I saw it. This is one of those just cop out things, you know. It's that easy to run to complaint because you know it's on the Switch. It's not gonna be as good looking as it would be on a PS5 or on an Xbox. So this is just that cop out complaint, right? We all know that the original Breath of the Wild was running on the Wii U, so they had to make a Wii U version and then have the Switch version. And I'm pretty sure they're the same version with maybe minor improvements to the Switch version. I don't know, but this complaint that it doesn't look good is crazy to me because the parts that weren't Hyrule, right? The parts that weren't a part of the original game, they look pretty damn great. And if you go check out some other bigger YouTubers like Nintendo Prime, Mike Odyssey, etc., you'll see that they've been finding some really interesting patterns about things like DLSS, upscaling, FSR, different tech they're gonna be using for the textures, things like that. So this is just 100% cap. People are losing their minds about this game and the game hasn't even come out yet. So what does that tell you, bro? I guarantee this game is about to hit like crazy. These people ain't gonna be able to sleep at night. They're gonna be crying because this game is about to come out and blow everything out of the water, game of the year material. Again, this one's just crazy. I just wanted to slip past this one because it doesn't even make any sense. Now, if the argument is about frame rate, I can have your back on that one, all right? This game needs to have a pretty stable frame rate. The last game, Breath of the Wild, had a good frame rate. Of course it dropped here and there, like in the Forbidden Forest and things like that, but overall the frame rate was pretty good. I expect similar, if not better, frame rate. I'm not looking for it to be at a full 60, but if you can keep it at a stable 30, hey, I'm good to go. I've been playing 30 FPS all my life. 60 ain't done nothing for me. Of course it's great, you know, but hey, I can play 30 and 60. I'm built different. So the next common complaint that I'm hearing online through the grapevine, right? Through that awesome website known as Twitter and Reddit and etc., right? Is that it just looks like the same Hyrule. Mother, it, it is the same Hyrule. What do you mean it looks like the same Hyrule? I mean, what were, like, my, my mind's blown here. I don't understand what these people were expecting. Yes, it's the same Hyrule. So yes, there's gonna be a lot of returning places, a lot of returning textures, a lot of returning enemies, but it will be different. There will be different mechanics. There will be different enemies. There will be different locations. It's going to be a full blown sequel, but yes, we will be returning to some of the same places. Stop capping and pretending like games have never done this before. Hundreds of games have had you return to locations in the previous games, okay? This is nothing new. This is a non-point. We don't know enough. We have no idea how big it is up there in the sky. We don't know if you can go underground. We don't know if there's something hiding in the water. Obviously, the shrines probably aren't returning, so what's going to be replacing that? What about dungeons? We have no idea what this game is going to offer. And for you to say to dismiss the game because it has the same high rule is absolutely ridiculous. Again, another terrible point from these haters. It's insane. It's crazy to me. And listen, if you don't like good video games or something, just let a brother know. Come on. I mean, I can stop making these videos if that's just the point. Anyway, fam, we got to move on to the next topic, which I think you will be interested in. Now, listen, this one's a little bit hit or miss, okay? Dungeons. Again, we don't know anything about the game. The game could have dungeons. The game might not have dungeons. I personally don't think dungeons are that important. My favorite Zelda game is Breath of the Wild, and they did not have and it did not have traditional dungeons. So, depending on what route they take here, they could make or break the entire game. For example, Personally, I think they should go with the Hinox thing where they had kind of like these roaming baddies to fight. It would be awesome to me if they had more roaming big bads who were like their own bosses who were tougher. I would say kind of lean a little bit more into the Dark Souls route, make them a little harder and have a lot of roaming enemies around that you can just stumble into. Or, or go back to traditional dungeons, except for don't make items necessary to complete the dungeon. Completely fine with me. I'm okay with any way they go because I have the utmost confidence in the Zelda team. 
them folks don't miss guys they don't miss zelda hits every time so i don't understand where this lack of confidence is coming from right if this was a new studio I could understand these complaints a little bit more because that studio hasn't proven themselves. They don't have that track record. They don't have 20 years of bangers. This company does, and I think that we owe them the benefit of the doubt, right? They don't miss. Of course, whatever they add is going to be fulfilling and it's going to be fun. Whether or not they have dungeons is completely irrelevant and it should not hinder you from playing the game and it should not really be a complaint. I understand the difference from saying, man, I would really like to have dungeons versus, oh, it's going to be terrible because it doesn't have dungeons. Get out of here, man. Terrible games don't sell 30, 35 million units. All right, let's move on to the last point. I'm going to hurt a couple people's feelings with this one, but this has to be said, bro. I'm sorry, but y'all looking real soft with this one. Real cuddle bear stuff. Like some spoiled gamer stuff, bro. Weapon durability. Bro, listen, I, I mean, <laughs> come on, bro. Listen, the game Breath of the Wild was built from the ground up and it was built and designed in mind for weapon durability for weapons to break. Yes, it was annoying here and there, but it was way overblown and every single one of you know it was way overblown. The game threw weapons at you. You couldn't get enough weapons. Everywhere they had weapons and good weapons. Now look, listen, I've heard a million different ways to fix this, right? Have, be able to fix weapons with the supplies you find in the world, have a blacksmith, have it limited to where you can only fix a weapon two or three times. I don't even need any of that. Just keep the durability the same way it was for all I care. I really don't care. The only real argument is the master sword breaking and even then I didn't care. I think that it was fine. I never had a problem with it outside the first like two hours. After that, I always had a weapon. Like I just, this one blows my mind. It's as if you guys have never played a video game before, right? Do you know how broken do you know how completely terrible Breath of the Wild would have been if weapons didn't break? You wouldn't even be able to pick up any weapons because you'd always have a weapon. It would just, it, it would take away half of the survival element of the game that was built around. Like, like th there would literally be no incentive to try any of the, any other weapon than your favorite one. Completely ridiculous with the v variety of weapons available in the game. You pick one you like and you never try anything else. Absolutely ridiculous. I can understand you wanting some changes to the weapon to system and I'm on your side if you want some changes but for you to say completely get rid of it is ridiculous I mean just ridiculous the game was built from the ground it was specifically built with weapon durability in mind okay again I do see them making some changes to it because of the outcry about it but I it was again completely overblown and all of you know it was overblown don't even sit here and cap at me. Don't lie. We all know it was overblown. Weapon durability is overall fine, especially if you found like, what, 10 Korok seeds to upgrade your inventory a little bit. Then you're just floating, bro. You're chilling at that point. So get that out of here. So yeah, these are some of the complaints that I've been seeing online. And to be honest with you, it's been annoying and it's been bothering me and I've been wanting to speak about it. Again, if I miss anything, let me know in the comments below. If you got a disagreement, call me out. I'll talk to you in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see y'all in the next one.